Hey, this is Kyle from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we are going to migrate the quiz project to Swift 4.2 and refactor some code to use some of the new conveniences added to the language. So let's go! First of all, let's make sure we have the latest version of Xcode installed. There it is, Xcode 10.0. So let's create a branch, migrate to Swift 4.2. Great. So we have two projects we need to update. We have the engine with the core logic and we have the application that depends on the engine. And every time I'm migrating a project, I always like to start on the project or framework that has the least amount of dependencies. And in this case, it's the engine. The engine doesn't depend on any other project or module. So it looks like the best place to start. Let's open the project. By the way, Xcode build and XCD are commands that if you have Xcode installed in your machine, you have those commands already. And XCD will search for an Xcode project or workspace in a given folder, for example here the engine, and open it for us. It's a very nice convenience. So before we migrate, let's make sure our tests are passing. And they are. Nice. I don't know why Xcode is not helping me to migrate to the project. It normally generates a warning with a shortcut to convert to the latest Swift version, but we can go to Edit, Convert to Current Swift Syntax, select our targets, and press Next. The only problem here is that it didn't select all the targets I wanted. For example, I have a Quiz Engine iOS target that doesn't show up here, so we might have to do some migration manually, and I'm going to show you how you can do that. First of all, let's press Next here. And apparently there are no source changes necessary, so let's just update to the Swift syntax. If we search for Swift language in the build settings, select the target, you can see that it updated the build setting to use the latest Swift version for the quiz engine target and the quiz engine tests target. But it didn't do it for the iOS target or the iOS test target. So in this case, we're going to have to do it manually. Okay, this is done now. Let's run the tests again. They are passing. Let's make sure our iOS framework also builds and passes the tests. And it does, so it looks like it's all good. By the way, the shortcut to commit on Xcode is Alt Command C. Let's give it a nice message. Migrate the quiz engine to Swift 4.2. Great. Now I want to have a look at the code and see if I can find anything we can refactor. And the improvements in the hashable protocol is a good place to start. Let's see if we have any hashable in the project. Okay, we have a enum question that implements hashable and it has its own implementation here. And we don't need that anymore because the compiler can synthesize an implementation for that. So let's remove this, run the tests. Whoa, we got some failing tests. Okay, so we create a question with a string type. As we can see, the question holds a generic type that implements hashable, so a string implements hashable, so it's all good. Then we are asserting that the hash value for the question type is the same as the type dot hash value or the string. And this is a bad test because it's testing the implementation and not the behavior. So the behavior we want for a hash function is that if I have the same values, the hash should be the same. But if it's a different value, we would want the hash value to be different. If we roll back the code, there it is. We are just returning the hash value for the generic type. This is going to generate a lot of collisions. For example, it would not differentiate the single answer for the multiple answer. For example, let's test that if I have a single answer hash value in a multiple answer of the same type, the hash value should be different. So let's say not equal. And as you can see, they are equal, which means that's a bad implementation. And at this point, since we are not going to have this code here, and we're going to rely on the compiler to implement the hashable, we could just delete this test. Because if I don't have any code implementing that behavior, I don't need to have tests. I just trust that the compiler implementation of hashable is good enough, because the Swift team has a bunch of tests around that. But it's a bad practice to delete tests that are not passing. So as an exercise, I would like to make those tests more resilient before I can use the compiler to generate this code for me. 
and make sure that the tests are passing before I delete it. So let's roll back this again. Let's comment this test out because it's not part of the tests we want to fix. So we don't want to hard code this value, but we also don't want to test the implementation as we did before. So what is the behavior we want to test? If I have the same value, I have the same hash, but if it's a different value, I have a different hash. Okay, so we can start there and I could have something like question single answer of type hash value is equal to the question. So if I create this type again with the same value, it should have the same hash. So I don't need this anymore. But if I create this type with a different value, they should not be equal. Great, the test is passing. And I can see the test failing if I just return some hard-coded value. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this test is better now, but I would like to do some refactoring. First of all, let's call this a value. And now we can create another value. Run the test again. Okay, that makes more sense. But I still don't like that we don't have enough samples here to guarantee that this is actually creating a decent hash. So if we could generate some kind of random value here, that would be much better. But I don't want to just create an integer, for example, because there's a chance that both of them are going to be the same. So I want to have a value that is unique. And in this case, we can use just a UUID. Let's run the test again. And they still pass. Okay, I like this much better. So we can do the same thing for the multiple answer. Let's also rename this test now. We don't test the implementation anymore, so that test name didn't make sense anymore. Great, but we still have a problem here with the bad implementation, where I can use different enum cases with the same value and they're generating the same hash value. And I don't want this to happen. So again, let's make this test use a unique UUID. Make sure it's still not passing. Great. Now we can make this unique by combining, for example, another string to it. It's just a dummy implementation, just to make the test pass. Now I'm happy with the tests, they are pretty generic. So let's give this test a better name. Say hash value with the same value, the same wrapped value. Say is different for single and multiple answer. That's good for now. Tests are still passing, so let's commit. Alt Command C. Improve question hash value implementation and make tests less fragile. We can now remove this implementation. And if the test pass, I'm confident that the behavior expected is preserved. And it is. Great. Let's commit. Alt Command C. Remove question hashable custom implementation. Just run the test again. It's passing. So I can now remove the test. Alt Command C. Remove redundant question hashable test. And now you may think, if you were going to delete the file, why would you do all those steps? And yeah, it looks overkill. But especially when we are migrating code, it's very important to have a very disciplined process to guarantee correctness. If we start deleting tests in a red state, we might let a bug slip in and that's going to be a problem. So I never delete tests in a red state. I always go back to a green state and then I remove them. So we just saw an example of a bad test. And I would like to show you an example of a good test that is resilient to change. So I have another code base here. And one of the features of the app is that it generates random quizzes with random questions and options. And when we are dealing with dates or random elements, I normally see people mocking those functionalities and passing some kind of clock or random generator. And most of the times, you don't need that. We can test randomness by probability. For example, I have a test here that if I have a, a given element, within four elements and I generate random quizzes a hundred times, I expect the element to be the first between a margin of 10 times to 40 times. So minimum of 10 up to 40. And then another assertion that if I have the same element within 10 entries and I generate random quizzes a hundred times, 
I expect it to be included 100 out of 100. Because one of the business rules for this quiz is that every game has 10 questions. So if I have an element within 10 entries, it should show up every time. But if I have an element within 20 entries, since the limit is 10, I expect the element to be in the quiz from 30 to 70 times. This gives us a probability and also guarantees that our random algorithm works properly with a range that we are comfortable with. If we check the implementation now, I had to write a custom shuffle implementation because it was not part of the Swift foundation. But now we do have a shuffle function in the foundation framework. So I can replace all of this custom code with elements dot shuffled. And of course, let's return this. Let's run the tests. And as you can see, they pass, which means the shuffled implementation is good enough for our requirements. And just to make sure this test fail, if I don't shuffle the array, let's run it. There we have a bunch of failing tests. So let me undo this, run the test again, and they pass. Fantastic. So without any mocking, we still have 100% coverage. So we are free to change the implementation as much as we want. And as long as the tests pass, we are good to go. Back to the quiz project. We committed everything, so it's clean. We can start migrating the application to Swift 4.2. Same thing, let's run the test first. Great, it's passing. So edit, convert to current Swift syntax. This time he has found all of my targets, so I think we're not gonna have any issues. Okay, some syntax change here. No problem, same here. So it's all good, let's save. Let's go to build settings and make sure we got the right language in our target. There it is, great. Commit, Alt Command C, a great app to Swift 4.2. Now let's see if there's any hashable in this project. We have only one in the test target. Hmm, returning a hard-coded hash value all the time. Now remember we did this because of the limitations of not being able to get a hash value for a dictionary, but this was fixed. So now we can improve this implementation by using the new hashable APIs. So the hashable protocol now defines this hash function by passing a hasher. So we should probably use this one and we can combine all the values defined in the result type. Let's open the result type. We have answers and a score. So let's combine answers and combine the score in the hasher. And that's it. That's one of the tests. Still passing. Fantastic. And that's it for this episode. Again, we recommend high discipline refactorings, especially when migrating projects. So never delete tests that are not passing. When possible, let the compiler implement hashable and equatable or anything the compiler can do. We don't have to write code, so we don't need to write tests. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time.